All right. Uh, I know you're saving some, but can you tell us like a little bit about Russia, like a short story or something? You ain't got to tell us a lot, just something on the. Well, I can tell you something about my uh, friend Ivan. Met him in 1980. We did a little something, something in between Columbia and, and well, we, well, me and him did something. And that's how we became friends. Then in 1980, 1983, the beginning of 1983, he came over and got me. He was like, come on, man, I need you to fly with me. I get in and we fly. I didn't ask where to, where to because that's my boy. If he need me, wherever we go, we go. We, we was cool like that. And uh, next thing I know, I was in Russia. Oh, man, I ain't got my passport. So you don't need no passport. This is my private jet. We take off and get in one location while we go somewhere else. We don't never give them exactly where we go. The government over here, they've been, a, they crooks like hell. They force you to do what they want to do. So once we got there to Russia, we went to uh, his uh, lounge. We sat in there because he had bought a lounge. I think it was, yeah, 83. I met him in 1980. 83 took me over there to show me his lounge. Beautiful place. And he said he had a surprise for me. So he come out with a tray and there's weapons all over it. I was like, man, I could get that from over there. He said, well, no, look in the middle. What's that in the middle? I said, Oh, man, it's that bread. Yeah, man, I love it. I can't remember the name again, but it's black bread. I sat down there, sliced a slice of that off, and he bought some beluga, some, some beluga. I don't know the name of those damn thing, but they come in a little can. Caviar. Suck. Yeah, caviar thing. You know, it was all right. I, I, I ain't too big of a fan on that. It's like eating raw eggs, you know, but I ate them with the bread, because with the bread, the bread just makes everything taste good. But it's black and hard bread, but when they slice it down, it's good. We were sitting in this lounge eating that. Then all of a sudden, we hear the police cars shooting everywhere. I was like, damn, police hot over here too, huh? He said, they probably coming here. I said, what? He said, yeah, they always want to hit my club. They know who we are. So he told everybody in the club, y'all know what time it is. Y'all hear them damn things. Everybody start getting up, pulling weapons out. Like, everybody ain't got a what, man? What's going on? He said, man, this is my crew. That's why I brought you over so you can meet everybody, man. So we, you know, me and you going to do a little something, something later. Oh, man, we know the police run all up in there. And man, before things hit, gun fly, fire start going on. Da, 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 da. Like, Holy hell, so I grabbed one of the guns off the tray. <laughs> and then I said, oh, that's why you brought this tray out. <laughs> I grabbed one of the little bad boys and I just started popping off from them. But I wasn't really trying to hit anyone. But I know I did hit about three or four people. And they wasn't none of Ivan boys, so... After the shit was down, I went out through that side. Well, they got a, they got a front door, they got a side door on this side. I ran out through that side door. And I heard somebody talking about, don't go out. And too late, I was out and they got me. They grabbed my big butt through <laughs> out on the ground, handcuffed me. But lucky enough, I had already, and she put the gun back on the tray when I was running out the door. I'm trying to get away now. I don't, I don't know how this going to work out. These are cops. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, I did. They ain't gonna arrest me. Take me down there to the fucking precinct and uh, book me in. They they was telling the other ones about where they got me from. They talking about they got a word for blacks over there. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna repeat it, but they were like, yeah, he was at a uh, Ivan uh, lounge. I was like. What the hell? Then they went to talk about, uh, let's see some ID. I was like, oh my God. I said, it's back at the lounge. 
<laughs> I figured I had to come up with something or do something. So they said, well, make a call and have somebody read it. So I get on the phone. I made a call. And he said, don't worry. You'll be out of there within an hour. I was like, I hope so, man, because these people want ID. I ain't got no, I ain't got no passport. You didn't tell me was coming in, or I would have got my passport, you know. So within an hour, I was released, even though they were trying to charge me with attempting to shoot uh, law, law enforcement. But they released me because they had more people saying that I didn't have nothing to do with it. I was just trying to get out the way I ran out the side door. After they released me, uh, boys picked me up at the at the precinct because Ivan don't come down there. You know, they, they, they hate Ivan. That's why they keep running into his place trying to catch him. But like he said, he's not going to be taken alive. You want, you want me? You want to come in? and kill me because I'm not going out. <laughs> but he came and got me, boys, took me back to the club. Got into the club. Ivan was there. We jumped out, jumped back into one of his cars and went and went to his place. We sat up there. And under his coat, I didn't know he had grabbed the bread. <laughs> he grabbed the bread over here. I'm like, man, what? He said, man, since you said you like this, I'm going to make sure I always have this on hand for you, my brother. I said, oh, now I'm your brother. He said, you know me, me and you brother. We brother from a different mama. <laughs> like, okay, okay. You trying to pick up some soul talk. Ain't no thing, though. But uh, we went back to his place. He was telling me about something that he need taken care of over here. I said, well, you know I got your back. He said, well, in about another hour or two, we're going to go try to hit this mama. We're going to try to hit this person. This individual we're going to hit, he's very nervous and skeptical. He don't let nobody get clear, clear, clear enough to him. But we figure you can get close enough because you black. I said, wait a minute, what you mean because I'm black? He said, yeah, they is not going to expect anything to come from you. And the pair and the part that he goes into, there's a there's quite a few black people. It ain't too many, but there's quite a few. So he won't be expecting you. I said, Oh, so you're gonna pay me for the hit then? He said, Yeah. A hundred thousand. I said, Okay, I guess I could accept that, but man, you flew me way over here, you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me nothing, because I would have brought my weapons. My it mines is calibered perfectly. He said, here, yeah, that's why I brought you the tray. Like, you still got that tray? He said, yeah, just take what you need. No, I'm going to take them all when I leave. I'm not going to leave none. So I picked up the one that I, I knew that will do the job. So we get there in the little store, and uh, the guy was next to a uh, next door in the restaurant, but inside the store, since the store and the restaurant are connected, I go into the store and then go through the side door then into the restaurant. So when I walked in, he had already showed me where the guy going to be. He showed me the picture of the guy. I said, ain't no fine. Uh, you might have to cover my back in case somebody trying to run behind me. He said, no, 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 no. We got that covered. But we just need somebody to get close enough to him and put in that work. I said, ain't no thing. I walked in, looked, looked the other way. Everybody was still looking at me. By the time they realized what was up, it was already too late. I looked this way, pulled up my gun out, boom! Put it back in, kept looking. Then I started walking backwards, getting out the door. Several of uh, his bodyguards had jumped up already. I even them came in from around me, and the West came in through the front door and started Blasting each other. I mean, it looked like a Vietnam shootout. <laughs> Everybody trying to die for some some type of hiding spot. I said, ain't no thing. I went back out through the store. On my way out the front door, I grabbed. Uh, it was I don't even know the I don't even know the name of the wine I grabbed, but it was there by the door. I just grabbed it. I figured I might have to throw it at somebody because I wasn't paid to pull the trigger again. 
If, if I pull this trigger again, you're going to pay people. Each shot, I, each shot, I shoot out. That's the way I do him. Again, I jumped into the car. He's already in the car. I, said, I thought you went into the He said, yeah, well, we finished. Don't You don't hear no more shot? He took off. Boom. We taking off, flying out on the street. I'm like, well, why are you driving so fast? He said, the police going to come quick, and if they see my car, they're going to chase us. I said, shit, I'm going to jump and roll, baby. <laughs> I get caught with you. You a hot motherfucker over here. Excuse my language. But you hot over here, dude. And uh, now you being that hot, which I didn't know you was that hot. Until they got me down into that uh, police station, I'm like, that's all they talked about was you, dude. They're going to kill you whenever they get a chance <laughs> if they don't sniper you. He said, I'm not worried about that. They can't get on none of my buildings. I own this section over here. I was like, well, okay, I heard about how y'all do things over here, but me, why don't you just take it to the mastermind behind all this? You know how we do it? Figure out who is behind this and who is running this. Then you take it to that person. Just like you just had me to pop which car in the head. He ain't going to be uh, no more problem for you. He said, I know. We already taking over his uh, <laughs> situations, and his people are gonna fall in line. If not, then they get it too. I said, "Okay, you, you sound like ancient Michigan. <laughs> you don't fall in line. You next." But uh, he's he's a good friend. He still was and still is. I haven't heard from him in about seven years. Well, oh wait, I'm, I'm better about a year. I haven't heard from him since 2007. Was the last time I seen Ivan. But uh, yeah, Russia was cool. But then, of course, the second time I got arrested over there, uh, that's when they was really trying to basically put me in that prison. I said, oh man. I gave him my paperwork and they were like okay but uh we not letting you go we gonna get you for murder if we get you for murder we gonna kill you I said well if you do don't tell me <laughs> I don't care what damn about y'all kill me I, I, it won't be no more problem to me cause I won't be alive if I'm dead or living I'm not scared of death Never have been. I think sooner or later I'm going to die. Matter of fact, really, I thought I should have been dead back in my 30s. But here I am. Still alive. But everything was great. They kept me in uh, this lockup situation over there for about two months. Then finally, they just came to the cell, opened the door. Hollered my name out. I got up and uh, went to the door and they said, you've been released. I said, what? You've been released. Well, I ain't going to ask them why or this and that. Shit, <laughs> that's a stupid fool. Why? They uh, said, like, I want to stay there. I got out. Boys out there again. I'm like, man. He said, we going straight to the airport. Get in, get in. I got in, he drove me straight to the airport. They got me out of there. About several hours later, I get a thing over my phone. And, you know, like back then we had the bag phone. I get a thing over my phone. I'm like, what the hell? Okay, he said, call him. It was like a message phone, you where you mess. But I called him, he said, listen to this. He turned his uh TV up or whatever that we was planning to do. That they were looking for a black man. <laughs> they were describing me. I was like, what the hell? He said, yeah, man. Uh, you hot over here like me now. <laughs> you can't come back for a while. I said, if I did come back, I'd come back and hang out in your spot. They come in there, we do like we did before. He said, man, I'm trying to calm Jane Downs now. I got uh, several... Uh, that politician on my side, but we got the, you know, the man that run the whole, the whole show. We're trying to get him out of our backs because he steady keeps sending his little undercover things over here. 
I was like, well, okay. Talk to you when I see you again. He said, it might be a while, but just remember, we friend to the end. I said, okay, Chucky. <laughs> we friend to the end. You were looking at that Chucky doll crap. You were like, if you ever need me, just give me a call. This number is always going to be working. Won't nobody else have it, probably just you. But never give that number to anyone or let anyone know. I said, okay. So when I talked to him, but the last time I talked to him, last time I seen him was 2007. I talked to him, I think it was August of last year. Because I told him about what I was doing with this podcast and so forth. He said, well, if you want to, you can show my picture. They can't prove anything on me in the United States. I said, yeah, but you, if I do, I will let you know ahead of time. Right now, the only thing I got is the court papers showing that uh, when I gave up people, uh, they had asked about you, and you is in my court papers. But they said that they couldn't give me immunity for Russia. But they also told me if I ever go back to Russia, you know, I'll probably be shot on the spot as soon as they see me because they got orders to kill you on the spot, boom. I said, well, it'd be one hell of a shootout because I'm not going to prison. I ain't got no more prison time in me. I'm not going to be taken alive and put anywhere. But you, but they told me you do got immunity for here in the United States. There's several different countries that they would like to catch you in, especially over in China. Russia was one of them, China. Colombia, ah, they don't really speak about you over there. See, because you never really used your name in those places. We found that out by the picture that they showed. I said, yeah, well, I never used the same name, not, not even when I was in uh, the U.S. I always used different names. Different cities, or should I say different states, I use different names. I know what they are because I just didn't want nobody to never know who I really was because I, I didn't want them to be out there looking for my family or anything because, hey, this is deal with me. You deal with me. The only reason that Boo and them found out about my family was through Bruiser. That's a 2020 boy, is my nephew. But if you Knew that my little brother used to hang with Bruiser. And that's how he found out about my little brother. That's why when they did that shit to my little brother, oh, that was a, a straight up no no. They knew that was my little brother. That's why they hired the Jack Rabbit to do it. But of course, he got caught. Things worked out bad for him. <laughs> I guess they figured that I would never find out. Of course I found out. He, the man came to prison. When he came to prison, oh, hey, man. But anyway, uh, Boris gave me the clear to go ahead and talk about him or talk about the situation that went on down over there. And Lee, I haven't spoken to Lee. I just, we just call him Lee. That's a Chinese with all the tattoos that he had on him. Oh, man, you got a lot of nerve to get all that tattoos. And if I'm sure, they use that little not, not to put your tattoos on you. I'm scared of needles. That's the only thing in this world I'm scared of is needles. Even when I joined the Army, they gave me the shot. They had to wrestle me to the ground. I told them, I quit then. Y'all got to give me, put a needle in me. I told them, you can't. You got sworn in already. To me, I get sworn in to go fight. Not to have y'all stick me with needle. I'm scared of them. That's when they made me go see the site. The site told them, uh, this man will fight you. He don't care even if he die. This man is really terrified of a needle. So I put it in my pole, in my file. Matter of fact, I even got paperwork on that to show that <laughs> the army caught hell, the prison caught hell. Everybody that want to stick a needle on me, they caught hell. Especially 
the prison system. Then you well, then you always tell me you're gonna get the shot or you go into the hole. So let's go. What's the hold up? What? You ain't gonna just take the shot and man, I don't care about no shot. I don't care about no hole. I'd rather go to the hole than to get a shot. They put me in the hole now. I guess they thought that I was gonna change my mind after a week. They told me, you ain't gonna get that shot. I said, no. Stay right here in the hole. Then they told the guards, uh, just give them one tray a day. What they don't understand is that when you talk down there at the end of the hallway, your voice travels down here, jackass. Excuse my language. So I hollered back down there. You ain't got to bring none of that crap to my door. I buy my food through commissary. Other than that, no, I don't want anything that y'all have to bring that's already cooked or already prepared. If I'm not preparing, I'm not going to eat it. I said, we'll take your commissary. I guess I'll be on uh, no eat uh, cell door then. Just put a sign. If I just get a torch and seal this up and yet because I'm not coming out. After three months of me telling him I'm not coming out for the shot, the psych told him, I think his wife for y'all to let that man out. The reason I know this is because the site told me, he said, because they didn't take me to his office no more. They let him come down into the cell, get a chair, and we talked through the trace uh, slot. I didn't go with it to the door. I just basically sat back on my bunk and just stared at him. I wouldn't say nothing. He said, well, how you feeling, Mr. Kraft? I still don't say nothing. I ain't said a word to nobody in like two months. Not a word. They told me, you want rent? I sit there and just sit there. They went and told the warden. The warden came down and said, okay, what's your problem? I just sat there. Mm -hmm. A month later, the warden came down. He said, he still won't talk. The only thing we hear him in there is that we had to give his commissary back because he wouldn't eat the food that we had put up in the uh, food slot. I'm not on a hunger strike. I'm just ain't eating y'all food. I don't trust y'all. Y'all might want to just spit in or stick your finger in or wipe your butt with it and put your finger in and stir the oatmeal up or something. I know. You ain't giving me nothing. So they finally just said, well, the warden will come down here and see you in a little bit. He came down. He unlocked the door and stood there. Mr. Kraft, we're going to let you back out of the population. You go going to sell such and such. You come out when you pack up. Pack up what? I ain't got nothing to pack up. And I still didn't say nothing. Though, but I think to myself, I ain't got nothing to pack up of taking my food with me and my legal material. Well, all this other crap is y'all. So, well, throw your sheets out here. I'm not throwing nothing out. And that's what I said to myself again. So I, I come out with my uh, with my pillowcase full of my commissary and my legal material. I walk down there by the door that lead back out to to like the general population. The guard asked me, uh, "Are you finished? Did you throw all your stuff out?" And I just stood there, staring at the door. You like, you ain't gonna speak. We let you go back to population. I still don't speak. He comes out, look down the hallway. He don't see no sheets. There's no sheets out there on that floor. You had to go back and, and throw them out to sell. I just stood there. He said, something wrong with you. I still stood there. Then finally, I said, today chicken day? <laughs> the first word I said, day chicken day? I can smell the chicken. Right. Damn, they chicken day. Because <laughs> usually everybody that know me, they know that I like the skin of the chicken. So, of course, they knew I was coming out the hole. So, you know, uh, who was it? John. John had went around and told everybody, boom, coming out. Yeah, boom, coming out. We got that chicken going on. You know that he loved the skin. And throw your, throw your skin in the bowl. They put all the skins in the bowl and shit. And when I got came into the unit, I threw myself on my cell bed and went back to the tower hall and just stood there. John came. He said, yeah, happy freedom. That's all? He said, well, 
Man, ain't you gonna thank me? Thank you for what? I went around and collected all this for you. I said, oh. I look around. So all the dope I put in here and all, all the goddamn money I helped you make, I got to thank you for something? Do you ever thank me for all that I did for y'all? We brothers. You do for me because you know I like that. I do for you because I know you like this. We do for each other. See, I need somebody to get my back 24-7. Don't make no difference what goes on or what comes about. You looking out for me? Good. I'm going to look out for you. That's how we do each other. It's not, oh, you, I got to thank you. Oh, thank you for getting this for me. No. Only thing I can say is that that's not enough. Get back there in the kitchen and tell homeboy, hey, where the rest of this chicken at? He's supposed to pull all the skin off of every chicken in there, fry it up, put it in a bowl, and give it to me when I come through the line. He said, but you didn't go through the line. I said, I don't make no difference when I go through. They know I was coming back to population. Now, when they come and they want pure pure drugs, I wanted to mix it up and cut it for them then. Because they didn't cut me. So I did do that to them for a little bit. I stepped on it a little bit, but it wasn't stepped on where they couldn't use it. We just stepped on enough where they weren't going to get that feeling that they normally get. So then they come to me about a month later and hey man, what's up man? You, you are stepping on the stuff now since you've been out. I said, because y'all wasn't helping me. I was in that hole. Nobody sent me no zoom zooms or wham wham. I had to spend my money through commissary and get my own. Yeah, I know how to get stuff in there to me. Same way when y'all went to the hole. Did I not always have one of the guard to bring you shit? He'll kick it on the, under the door to you or shove it all through the food slot. Especially, especially if it's a big bag of groceries I done sent you, they'll take it just dump it all out there real quick. <laughs> I mean, hey, you always get a guard to do something because they want you to do them a favor. Like, don't start no fight. To keep a... Uh, But he used to get drunk. And when he get drunk, the guards can't control him. They scared of this boy, period. Damn, I can't remember his name. He was all right with me, but I used to always give him, you know, his lick a little cheaper than everybody else because I use him sometimes to go slap the mess out of somebody. Just to, hey, man, go in and slap that punk for me. Okay, he wouldn't even ask me why. He just go, well, you know who that's from? That's from Mr. Kraft. Because basically in there, people call me Mr. Kraft or down with the Kraft. Because they used to wear the hats, down with the Kraft. And uh, that showed that they were down on my side. Not just because they were scared of me. No, don't never be scared of me because I'm, I'm a human being. I bleed just like you do. Hell, when that guy stabbed me on the yard, I bled, didn't I? But of course, he went and locked up and he got transferred up north, but that did save him. Mm -mm -mm. The man hung a sheet around his neck and jumped over the rail. Word got back to me. I said, Jay, why? Did he not like living anymore? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, man, I had one hell of a life, but it was a life that uh, I was basically proud enough being that I brought myself in, I raised myself from the age of nine all the way to who I am now. I still don't go out and parties or go out and do things that uh, most people would like to go out and do or have drinks at a bar. I don't drink. Go to picnicking, no, not unless it's on my balcony. <laughs> oh, now y'all know I stay, stay in the balcony. I got a balcony. But a whole lot of people see me and they come up to me and, oh, you Nate Boone Craft? Yes. Of course, you know, I ain't gonna get mad at them because they walked up to me and asked me, yes, that's me. You got a beef with me? 
go with it. You ain't got a beef. Let's take some pictures. Let's shake hands and we could kick it a little bit. That's what it's all about. Because I'm not going to no party. I'm not going to no lounge. I'm not going to no shows or none of that. Because that's how we used to catch a lot of people. They be going on their way. Hey, uh, these guys going to the show late. Okay, then we'll catch them there. They got to come back to their car. If we don't catch them coming back to the car, then we get a ticket. Go in there and find them. The malls. Well, y'all heard what somebody did at the mall. Shot up in the Eastland Mall. But yeah, we go to the mall. Matter of fact, I think we did that in Northland too. Well, somebody that I do did it, but not me. I don't like doing nothing where there's a lot of people at. Why? Because everybody gonna see you doing it. You have all these people picking you out. We got to say that for next time. We running out of uh, you got appointment too. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we can take that for the next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Appreciate y'all very much. Show me that you love me. I love y'all. Peace out.